was in high school and worked at McDonald's when a manager, Greg, asked me super casually to go to a party. We were both managers. I'd started when I was 15 and was now 17. Soon, I'd get my own apartment that I was saving for. My parents would co-sign while I was still a minor, as long as I continued to prove I was responsible. I was over living by their rules. All I recall about Greg, because he was so forgettable, uh, was he had a scraggly mustache, and he was 30. He said he just wanted a friend to go with for fancy food and free drinks at a resort in Phoenix. I thought Greg was kind of a sucker. He trusted a teenager not to binge on the open bar and embarrass him. So my first question was, I don't have to dress up, do I? I just want to wear Doc Martens and a skirt. He said, sure. I asked, what time should we meet there? He said we should go together because of the guest list and valet parking and things I was clueless about. So he'd drive. This made me slightly anxious. I always drove. I mean, for the two years I'd been driving. <laughs> My boyfriend didn't have a car, but I was a, a valet virgin. Like, you just hand over your keys? Like, after a speech about how the starter sticks and don't move the seat because the lever's broken. So reluctantly, I gave Greg my parents' address with explicit instructions. When he pulled up in his SUV, I ran out before anyone saw uh, because I didn't want questions about the old dude. Already, Greg was at the door. My internal alarms went off. First, seeing him outside of our work uniform, he was clearly a dork. <laughs> Worse, he was holding a gift bag like it was my birthday. I'd never been on a real date, unless you count dinner where my boyfriend's friend gave us free food and then breaking into a closed park. I knew gifts mean it's a date. I didn't want it. Open it, he said, thrusting it into my hands. I started down the driveway, rushing us away from my parents' door. They disliked my unemployed boyfriend. But even though Greg was educated and employed, they'd be concerned about this 30-year-old. Greg held my shoulder, which made me recoil, and insisted I open it now. Treating it like the box of pain in Dune, <laughs> I reached inside. It was a red rose, which was too sappy. Thanks, I said, headed for his car. He said, wait, there's more in the bag. Also inside was a card for going with a work friend on a not date, a flowery card which was also too sappy. He'd written a bad joke. Sorry, it's only one single rose. Its friends escaped in the fields. Uh... Only then did he let me in his car, and I saw why he gave me one rose and the card first. On the seat was a dozen red roses, which I'd never received before, not even from my boyfriend, because he knew me. So when he invited me to prom, he had roses painted black for me, which was my idea of romance. Greg even brought water for them to hammer home that he was an adult man who came prepared and was unlike my teenage boyfriend. I actually do appreciate that, but at the time, too dad-like. As we drove, I felt lightheaded and helpless, thinking 
He planned this. All of this. Ugh, gross. I was too trusting. And now I doubted Greg's intentions, our friendship, everything about him. I'd agreed to come because at work we had smart conversations and he seemed harmless. And I never turned down a party. But I was also too nice. Like I couldn't say no. As an adult and a parent, I say no constantly, without explanation even. But it took a lot of practice. Panic rose. What else had Greg lied about? As we drove in the dark through the desert to a place I'd never been, I wondered if this was even the way there. Where were we really going? Was there even a party? My parents didn't know who I was with because I was super independent and they didn't expect me till midnight. There was no way to tell a friend. This was before cell phones. Suddenly, an oasis appeared, a lit up swanky resort. And I breathed a sigh of relief. So besides being a night manager, Greg had a real career too. At his day job, he was an engineer who worked on computer circuits. I guess he was a workaholic like I was and liked extra money. We were both saving up for housing and newer cars and I'd get roped into extra shifts that I didn't want because too nice. His tech company had gone all out for this Christmas party. A photographer took photos as we exited the car like we were a misfit version of Leonardo DiCaprio and whichever model he's dating this time. <laughs> Everyone was in formal attire. A photographer was posing people on a set and selling the packages like this was a rich people's prom. I was uncomfortably underdressed in a thin shirt over a tank top, a hoodie, and worn down blue docks my friend had outgrown. Greg wore a zigzagged sweater, sort of like Charlie Brown, and tennis shoes, khakis, and a pager on his belt. <laughs> and no, it wasn't cool even then. <laughs> I gotta say, when I said I wasn't dressing up, he at least followed my lead. The photographer, who I tried to avoid, but Greg made a beeline for, had us hold each other's arms like we were cradling a baby that we don't want. He bought the package. <laughs> and I saved it. <laughs> I have since learned that for me, there must be consent that is both informed and explicit. He did not ask me on a date, even if he had, and I dodged the question. A non-answer is a no. A maybe is a no. A yes that's unenthusiastic or based on trickery, also a no. I live by this now. At 17, I was not conscious of the dynamics of an office party, much less one for engineers. The all-male workers circled up together. Their wives gathered to talk about them. I ended up in the dreaded wife circle. They wore sequined gowns and what I assume were designer shoes, it wasn't my thing, while I stood out awkwardly in my threadbare hoodie. The wives tried to include me by making small talk about Greg but even simple questions about his job and where he lived, I couldn't answer. 
A woman asked, a little suspiciously, how long we'd been married. I started laughing hysterically because I laugh when I'm nervous. I cried, oh no, <laughs> we're not married. We're both managers together at McDonald's. That's when I realized they didn't know about his second job. I said, I couldn't marry anyway. <laughs> she didn't get it, so I added, I'm in high school! <laughs> no one else was laughing. And that's when I saw the absolute horror on that woman's face and that it was matched by every single woman. I realized I had said too much and not said it the right way. Why I was blaming myself when Greg had brought a high schooler as his date, I don't know. But it's strange that while I tried to act older and more mature, he'd somehow made me want to tell the world how young I was. I tried to smooth it over, babbling, Greg just needed a friend, fancy food, and free drinks. With the drink in hand, I remembered I had just told them I legally <laughs> couldn't drink and should just shut up. On the ride home, I laughingly relayed this conversation to Greg, who didn't comment on it, but probably didn't think it was funny. I wonder what the fallout was at his job with it being the target of office gossip so icky and maybe at risk of being fired. After, I told my boyfriend, who'd worked with Greg at McDonald's briefly, he left that dude. <laughs> he didn't feel threatened at all and felt sorry for me and Greg because Greg was a dweeb. And after that, I ignored Greg and didn't see him outside of work again until I turned 18. He had quit our job and had to talk to me, not at work. Suspecting what this was about, I let him come to my new apartment but did not invite him in. So standing in the courtyard, he professed his feelings for me. This was despite my boyfriend, who I told him was waiting inside, uh, because I insisted on handling this myself. It was almost comical if I weren't so annoyed that he was still trying. Greg told me the first time we met was sort of like love at first sight. I had no recollection. According to him, he was filling in at my restaurant. When he saw me, his mind went blank. He forgot what he needed to say, and he slinked away like a fool. After asking around, he learned I was only 16. He resolved never to talk to me. Later, he was transferred to my location and panicked because he knew he shouldn't be around me. His feelings were so strong that he wouldn't have self-control. The thing is, Greg did seek me out. Outside my apartment, Greg ducked his head and said he was ashamed to admit it, but I was his Lolita. And he paused to let that sink in. It didn't matter, I didn't get the reference. What did I know about Russian novelists? But it is about men sexualizing and being tempted by girls. How inappropriate this all was has become clearer to me in recent years. After work, Greg used to email me, telling me to go look at the full moon. And I'd say, oh, cool. After he saw my dismissive reactions to him and met my boyfriend and I snubbed him, that creeper still pursued me and I'm finally angry about it. 
In junior high, my parents told me, boys will want to date you, even older ones. It might be flattering, but think, if you're 14, why would a 20-year-old be courting you? He can't get a girlfriend his own age. There's something wrong with him. Yet I thought Greg's behavior wasn't that bad. We were both managers. I wasn't his subordinate. He didn't befriend other girls, so he wasn't a serial predator. Somehow that's better. I was so set on proving I could take care of myself that I dismissed that he was preying on a teenager. And I had been naive in letting him be my friend. Thankfully, he didn't coach me or groom me, or if he was trying to, he was really bad at it. <laughs> to this day, that party for engineers was my fanciest date ever. But my enthusiastic consent goes toward exciting dates instead, like cosplay events or music fests. Who needs staged photo packages when you can have candidates with an eagerly consenting partner? Thank you.